Hello to you, I do hope you're well. Welcome to this GCSE Religious Studies video. I'm Ben Wardle and in this very short video, I'm going to give you key quotes for every topic on the Christianity specification. So we will talk through the beliefs, teachings and practices and I will give you key quotes to use for each topic. Let's get started with the nature of God. So if you're writing about God's omnipotence, you could quote Jesus who said that with God, all things are possible. For omnibenevolence, you could quote the Gospel of John, which teaches God is love. And if you're writing about God being just, the Old Testament says the Lord is a God of justice. For evil and suffering, you would, of course, be talking about original sin. So in Genesis, God says to Adam and Eve, if you eat fruit from that tree, you will die. Genesis also teaches the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. And of course, that is about original sin and the fact that that brought sin and suffering into the world. St. Paul wrote that when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. He also wrote that suffering produces perseverance. So you could make an argument that suffering is needed as part of God's plan because it helps to strengthen our souls and develop our characters. For the Trinity, Jesus said in the New Testament to baptise them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. They are, of course, the three people of the Trinity. So the first person, the Father, we could quote from Genesis, which says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, emphasising his transcendence and omnipotence. For the Son, the New Testament says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So Jesus is the incarnate son of God. He is God in human form. And then the Holy Spirit sent down at Pentecost after Jesus ascended. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is the advocate who will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said. Remember, Christians believe there is one God who is known through three people, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They are all eternal and they are all God. With the Father, you emphasise transcendence, whereas with the Son and Holy Spirit, you would emphasise imminence and God's closeness with humanity. Our next topic is creation. So again, God the Father, we could refer to Genesis, which teaches in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Son, Jesus, was also involved in creation and present at creation. The New Testament says through him all things were made and the Holy Spirit was also there as well. Genesis says the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So all three people of the Trinity were present at creation. And then a more general quote about creation. Genesis 1 says God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Heaven now. And Jesus said, my father's house has many rooms. He also taught in the parable of the sheep and the goat that the righteous will have eternal life. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says that to live in heaven is to be with Christ. And in terms of contrasting ideas about what heaven is like, St. Paul has a great quote for arguing that it is a spiritual state because he wrote that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So that would suggest that it is not a physical place that you go, but it is actually a spiritual state for your soul. For hell, there's a great quote from the book of Revelation that it is the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And then in terms of who actually goes there, in the parable of the sheep and the goats, Jesus teaches that the goats, who are those people who have not performed good deeds to help others, will go away to eternal damnation. Our next topic is Jesus and incarnation. So a brilliant quote from the New Testament is that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And that is, of course, about the incarnation, which Christians celebrate at Christmas. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the father except through me. He also said that the father and I are one. So again, emphasizing that Christians believe Jesus is the incarnate son of God. For crucifixion, St. Paul wrote that Christ died for our sins, emphasising the importance of the crucifixion and the purpose that it plays as the act of atonement. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is described as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That is what John the Baptist says about him. Again, emphasising that his death on the cross is the act of atonement that pays the price for human sinfulness and restores the relationship between God and humanity. 
and Jesus said about himself that he would give his life as a ransom for many. Our next topic is resurrection, which of course is celebrated on Easter Sunday. The Gospel of Luke says he is risen. And then Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though he dies. And that of course reflects the fact that the resurrection gives Christians hope for life after death. And then our next topic, ascension. Jesus said before he ascended, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And then in the New Testament, we are told that after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven. And of course, that confirms that Jesus is the son of God and it gives Christians hope that they can be with him after death. And then another topic is sin. St. Paul wrote, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, which is, of course, why we then all need salvation. And then if we talk about original sin in particular, remember that Genesis teaches the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. Salvation, then, we can use St. Paul's quote that Christ died for our sins, showing that Jesus is the source of salvation, that his death on the cross is the act of atonement that pays the price for human sinfulness. Remember, Jesus is described by John the Baptist as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So again, showing us the important role that Jesus plays in salvation. The book of Acts again talks about the role of Jesus in salvation. We are told there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. And then in terms of salvation through law and good works, Jesus teaches in the parable of the sheep and the goat that the righteous will have eternal life. Let's have a look at the practices section, key quotes now then. And for worship, you could quote from the Psalms, which teach, let us bow down in worship. The Psalms also teach, worship the Lord with gladness. For public worship, Jesus said that where two or three gather in my name, I am there with them. And then for private worship, he taught that when you pray, go to your room and close the door. Your father who sees what you do in private will reward you. Our next topic is prayer, and St. Paul wrote to be constant in prayer. The book of Proverbs teaches Christians that God hears the prayers of the righteous. And then just as a quick note as well, remember to use the ACTS acronym to remember the four different types of prayer. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And of course, you can refer to the Our Father, which is the prayer that Jesus taught in the New Testament as your source of wisdom and authority for this topic as well. For baptism, Jesus gave his great commission where he said to baptise them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So for infant baptism, you could quote the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which describes it as the basis of the whole Christian life. When original sin is washed away, when you are reborn as a child of God and you begin your new life within the church. And then for believers baptism, which is, of course, the Baptist ordinance, the Book of Acts says to repent and be baptized, emphasizing the importance of you repenting for your earthly sins. Remember, Baptists do not believe in original sin and then choosing yourself to be baptized and publicly declare your faith in Jesus Christ. For Holy Communion, also known as Eucharist, we can again quote St. Paul who said Christ died for our sins because of course Eucharist means thanksgiving and you are giving thanks for Jesus dying on the cross so that you can be saved from sin. Jesus himself said to do this in remembrance of me, which is why Baptists see it as an important ordinance, which honours an order given by Jesus. He said as well, Jesus said as well, I am the living bread. So emphasising the importance of the bread and wine or grape juice in the Baptist tradition as symbolic of Jesus. But also, of course, remember that for Catholics, they believe in transubstantiation. They believe that the bread and wine actually become the body and blood of Christ. And that is why the Catechism of the Catholic Church describes Eucharist as the source and summit of the Christian life, really illustrating its importance. Our next topic is pilgrimage. And again, you could quote Jesus, who said, where two or three gather in my name, I am there with them. Because, of course, we know every year five million people go to Lourdes, 130,000 people go to Iona. So it is a gathering of believers in order to take part in rituals and strengthen their faith. In terms of uh, a quote for Lourdes, we believe that when Virgin Mary first appeared to Bernadette, 
she announced herself, she introduced herself with the words, I am the Immaculate Conception. And then for Iona, you could quote the Psalms, which say the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Because remember, Iona is a remote island off the coast of Scotland where people believe that they are particularly close to God. And you can see the beauty of creation and you can spend time in the beautiful landscape, in the quietness and the stillness, privately praying and reflecting on your faith. So it's a place that people might feel particularly close to God and to heaven because of the beauty in the world and in the nature around them. Our next topic is Christmas. Remember, this is when the incarnation is celebrated and the Gospel of John says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And that is what you are celebrating at Christmas. Pope Francis said that Christmas is important because it reveals the immense love of God for humanity. For Easter, again, that brilliant quote from St. Paul that Christ died for our sins would be a really great one to use because, of course, on Good Friday, that is what Christians are remembering. In terms of the importance of Easter Sunday, St. Paul wrote that if Christ has not been raised, your faith is pointless and you are still in your sins. So the resurrection is arguably the most important moment in the Christian history. And so, of course, Easter Sunday is very important because if the resurrection has not happened, the whole religion is pointless and you cannot be saved from your sin. Really emphasising why it is a day of such celebration. And to build on that, the Gospel of Luke says that the tomb was empty and he is risen. So remember, at Easter, Christians are celebrating the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross, which is the act of atonement when Christ died for our sins. And then on Easter Sunday, they are celebrating that he is risen, giving them hope for life after death and giving them confidence that there is victory of life over death and of good over evil. Food banks and street pastors is our next topic. I would always be referring to the parable of the sheep and the goats for this one, when Jesus taught to feed the hungry. So a great one for why Christians would support a food bank. For both food banks and street pastors, you could also quote this parable when Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. You could also, of course, quote Jesus when he says, love thy neighbor, because it is all about putting your faith into action in the local community. And St. Paul also has a great quote you can use for this, this topic when he says to clothe yourselves with compassion. And so he would help those in need. For mission and evangelism, Jesus said in his great commission to make disciples of all nations. He also taught his followers to preach the gospel to all creation. And then again, we could mention the book of Acts, which says there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So you need to evangelize, you need to spread the good news about Jesus Christ so that as many people can be saved through him as possible. For reconciliation and persecution, you could quote St. Paul, who said that God reconciled himself to us through Christ. You could also use St. Teresa of Avila, who said Christ has no body now but yours. So you must represent Christ on earth, you must be a peacemaker, you must bring people together, you must forgive others. Jesus himself, said to pray for those who persecute you and he also said to forgive not seven but 77 times and then finally for faith in action when you're talking about christian aid cathod or tear fund you could again quote the parable of the sheep and the goats when jesus said the righteous will have eternal life you could quote from the epistle of james which says faith without works is dead so it's really important to put your faith into action and help those in need you could again quote St. Paul, who said to clothe yourselves with compassion and help those who are suffering, for example, after a natural disaster or if they're living in poverty. And finally, how could I end with any quote but love thy neighbour? Because, of course, Jesus taught to love thy neighbour, which means you should try to help those in need. Thank you for joining me. I hope that's been helpful.